that's just the next flicker. Awesome. Cool. I'm in. How's everyone's night? Everyone's having a good time? How cool is this event? So this is, um, this is the first one that I've been involved in, so thank you for having me. So what I'm going to be talking about is um, culturing purchasing behaviour through innovation in tech. I did have to throw the tech in there, and um, I suppose one thing about myself is this is going to be a little bit more about emotion than it is the actual theory behind it. I love the theory behind marketing, and it's saying that you can't discount. Um, but if I'm talking about what, how I'm going to add the most value to you guys, it's through these words here. So it's through learn, share, and repeat. And I'm a really big fan of that. So anything you might learn from me tonight, um, please go out and tell other people because it is about working together. It is about collaboration. But if we, <laughs> so I've got a title. I've got one minute to get here, and we're on 40 minutes already. So. What this is going to be, this is going to be a full information overload on what I've learned over my time. And if I have to talk about my time, a few people ask me what I do at the start of this, and I kind of get, I still get really confused because I wear a few hats. Recently, um, I've actually managed to replace myself within a business called Flight Digital. Flight Digital um, was born out of the back of understanding, mixing the traditional marketing methods with digital because from experience, it's not exactly how it happens. So I went through AUT and one of the great things that AUT taught me were the four Ps. And the four Ps are still saying that you can't discount today because if you discount the traditional methods and apply it to digital, you are going to be missing a lot of marks. And that's where you can really funnel a lot of money into digital channels. So talking about university over experience, the thing about university is it taught me the basis of marketing. It taught me the real vital things. When I got out into uh, the actual um, industry, my first role was in a company where the owner of the business ran a sales team and he really didn't know the first thing about marketing and I sat there within this business and I was like what am I going for my minute um, and I was like what are we doing we need to be doing this we need to be doing this and I started taking it to the boss and the boss kind of said it's not really how we operate and I was like yeah but you need to mix that and that so the thing is there is still a lot of value in the older style marketing that we learn the four P's um, the customer journey, the customer personas. So it is important to take both on board. Now, what a cool line. So content is the reason search began in the first place. Crazy, right? Like content is the reason that search began in the first place. Without content, what are you searching for? So now this brings me to my next slide and this is about understanding your customer. And this is key, this is really, really instrumental in the success of anything because when we look at what's available today, the big difference between traditional media and modern media is the advanced targeting and the analytics. Traditional media is great. Traditional media is TV, it's print, it's billboard, it's everything that we grew up around. And that's where the concepts of traditional marketing are still true. But now, instead of saying, how did that TV ad go? And you're like, yeah, like pretty good. I think like we sold some things. Now we can go like, we tracked it the whole way through and we know where that person came into our funnel. And now we know that that person's made a purchase and getting into the data, it is about looking after your customers who you know are gonna be your best purchases. Now, the second point, create personas. It is really about getting in touch with who your customer is. So this is where you want to know like, you want to know what the average household income of that person is, but then you want to get all the way down to what their hobbies are. And when I'm talking about marrying content, sorry, I'm a little bit biased on the content side, obviously, with Kelsey running around at the back. Um, but what it is, is if you know that your uh, baby wipes product is often bought by a soccer mum, that's where the advertising that you can do can have something relating to soccer in it and it's gonna relate more to that customer. So if you really slow down and assess who your customer is, what their hobbies are, what they enjoy, what they watch at night, that's where you can be reactive and you can create a strategy which is gonna relate a lot more to that person. Now, impulse buying versus planned buying. Because the thing about the world that we live in, there is two sides. Like, do I want that new pair of shoes? I do, but do I really need a plumber to fix that toilet? I really do. 
And the funny concept behind that is um, my, my grandma, <laughs> lovely lady, amazing lady, but my grandma, um, for being 97 years old and fairly like with it for 97, I went, I went down to her place and I was, she had a problem with her bathroom and I was like, oh, do you need me to sort something out? She's like, no. I jumped on Google and I sorted it out. <laughs> so, all right, cool, perfect. But that's the difference between impulse buying and plan, the need versus want. Because the need is when you have your toilet and it's got water rushing everywhere and it's about to wreck your walls, that's your need. So your customer journey is a lot shorter. A business that um, I was lucky enough to be a founder of is a teeth whitening business. And the thing about teeth whitening is you do really need to culture that. It's something where people need to get over maybe the misconceptions that are in their mind about the industry. It becomes a want, but that's where the customer journey is a lot longer thing. It's not a matter of, hey, I just Googled it and I found the guy. It's a matter of, hey, I did this amount of research and the people that are gonna do well out of that are the people that have a customer journey. So you're the most prominent thing in that person's mind when it actually comes to purchasing. So there was a little video there. I need to remember to do a double click. Cool videos, but getting into this. So now integrated marketing communications, IMC. See, I did learn something, I was listening. Um, so integrated marketing communications, what it really comes down to is having your same messages through consistent channels. So it's about knowing your own brand. But the thing that I really like to compare this to is um, going to a bar and seeing someone that you're interested in. So again, going to AUT, and this is a little bit more of the emotional side, um, but going to AUT, one big thing that I remember is that it takes seven times someone to see a brand, image, logo, color, font, combination mark, anything to be able to recall it without a prompt. And the thing about that is if we're looking at integrated marketing communications and what you'll see in my next slide is you can actually have seven touch points of a very similar thing within a very short amount of time. And if we compare the content side to that and taking people on a customer journey and comparing it to the people in the bar, is if I go up to someone in the bar and I'm really attracted to that person, I don't need seven touch points. I need hope, oh, three at a push. I need name three times. But then I'm going to be able to recall it. And if we take that same thing into digital marketing, how to grow a brand and how to sell a product, all it comes down to is if you really know your offering and if you can sell it to look the best and if you have that second touch point really be that winning side, I'm not going to need seven touch points to make the purchase. I'm going to need hopefully the three. So that's where it is about building a perception around a brand that coincides with who your customer is. Push and pull functions. There's a few things that have been spoken about tonight that are really, really important. And the thing about a push and pull function, if I'm going to say anything here tonight, is understand that one, becomes, uh, one comes before the other. Could I get a raise of hands? And who in this room has run an AdWords campaign before? Got a couple, and could I keep those hands up and just lower the hands of people who um, have not coincided that with a remarketing campaign? There's a couple. So the really cool thing about um, a push function is Google relies on people searching for what you offer for you to be found. So in a way, they're pre-qualifying themselves, and it's not you spending money trying to attract a new audience, but the real great thing about that is as soon as someone shows you that they're interested, you can have them completely. You can now take that person on a customer journey. And one real big mistake that we see in digital marketing is not understanding that it's not just, hey, this is who we are, use our business today. It is about culturing that environment. When I looked at the word culturing, culturing kept putting me back to science and saying it's about having a warm environment, I think that was because of petri dishes, but it's about having an environment that things are, things are allowed to grow in. So the thing is, push and pull functions creates an environment. A push function makes a touch point, but being able to follow up on that person is your environment. Now, is funnel a buzzword? 
The cool thing about it, the cool thing? No, it's the terrible thing about our industry is buzzwords are a really big thing. Because if I stand here and I say SEO, SEO, everyone's like, yeah, I really need SEO, but no one really understands SEO. SEO is a skill set, but more than that, it is a buzzword. But the thing about the word funnel, funnel is not a buzzword. If we're looking at selling a consumer product or a FMCG or something, people aren't making a decision from the very get-go. You do need a little bit more. So I'm going to show you the real life example of that because this here is my own. And this is what we do, and sorry, this is actually what we did last week because I was like, oh, I'll pull out something. Wow, what can I use as an example? I looked for the clients, I was like, no, I'll use your own. And this is, this is my example of culturing purchasing behavior. Almost lost me. But what it is here is this is our push function. So what this is, is this is a Google ad, and this is people qualifying themselves by searching for what I offer. But the thing that a lot of people don't know, and please click into my website, now that I'm telling you about this, but what it is, is as soon as you click into this, and it's actually a really cool site, that thing spins around and that goes on and off, um, but as soon as you're in there, this is where I can take you on a journey. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to mistreat you, I'm not trying to, um, trick you into anything but now I can show you what my business does and what it does is this here this is actually a really cool project this is um, a progressive web app that we're doing for a teed on behalf of the Auckland city fringe areas but imagine that being the second touch point you've come in looking for a website from me you've clicked into my website now the second thing you see is oh we're working on this cool project with a teed all it takes is a little bit of slowing down to recognize that this is your customer journey. So it is about really assessing what your customer wants to see, but then taking it in steps. If you just run an AdWords campaign on a bit of an ad hoc basis, where you're just like, let's get something up and we're gonna try to get customers in, they're gonna get in, they're gonna, get, they're gonna stop there, but they're gonna look for three or four other businesses, and that's where you've lost your touch. Unless that thing follows them up. And then, hopefully it animates. That thing follows up. So that's a display remarketing ad. And we actually do something real sneaky about display. I'm watching my time. But you know how you see display ads everywhere, through um, stuff and through trade me and through uh, one day and everything. The really cool thing about that is um, big business does it and they say, find out more. So Visa and, um, and ASB do these ads and they go, find out more. If you actually remove the click to call, if you actually remove your call to action, the Google platform starts to freak out because it's like, I'm not actually getting the clicks, yet you're paying me for this cost per click basis, so I need to start delivering this ad to a whole lot more people. The best time that I've ever had with a remarketing ad without a call to action, I think we were getting 260,000 views on our ads for 200 bucks, for $180. It's really fun, it's a little bit outside the box, but after all of this, what you get hit with, with innovation through technology, is you get a personalized email that is a reflection of what you've looked at on my website. And one thing that I skimmed over at the very start is within Flight Digital, I've actually replaced myself. And it's been really weird, like it has. I've been a part of Flight Digital from the very start, but when I say it was the very start, it was, it was started in a kitchen and I was on the phone calling clients saying, hey, we know what we're talking about, we wanna do some really good work for you. Since then, um, the business has grown to have a team of 17 absolute professionals, like these guys are incredible. Don't get me on a chat about teamwork because that's a 45 minute chat you're not ready for. Um, but, but more than that, it is, uh, oh, I'm struggling not to go down the teamwork side because you get a good team behind you and all this happens. I just talk. So now my role is um, stepped out and it is into other group with the beautiful Kelsey at the back taking photos of everyone. But I have only managed to replace my sales role within my business by having this set up. At the end of last year, I got to a time where all I was doing was answering the phone and passing it to my team. Now I'm not even needed because once you understand your customer 
And once you understand how to cultivate purchasing behavior through a process like this, then it becomes very easy. Now, innovations and last thoughts. So I've just run out of time, so I'm going to touch on these in a very short, very quick, very fast way. So, remarketing. Does, who here knows about remarketing? Everyone's familiar with it? It's the process of saying, hey, I'm flying to Queenstown, and then for the next week, all you see are things to do in Queenstown. I'm flying here, I'm seeing that. Remarketing, if you run any business, or if you sell any product, or if you do anything that takes a little bit of research, you really do need remarketing set up. It is incredible. That's the point where you start taking people on the journey. Analytics, normally in business they talk about knowing your numbers, and that's the profit and loss, and that's the cost of this and the cost of that. I swear I, I do know my numbers are right. But the thing about it is, analytics is giving us this whole new world where it says, I've had a thousand people through my website this month. And the thing about that is if you have analytics through your website and you can recognize that there's a thousand users through your site per month, then you don't need to attract more business. But that's where your strategy needs to go into converting the people who are coming through your site currently. So do really know your numbers. Automation. Now automation, we're in this golden period of time right now where like AdWords when it started 10 years ago, it was like, oh, what's AdWords? And because no one was doing it, there was a really good response out of it. Now that's automation. So now we actually have the capability to, every single time you click through a separate page on my website, you actually do get put into a separate audience. And now what happens from that is I serve each audience its own specific set of ads that relate to that person. And when you do that, because it's relating to that person, that's how you culture this environment where people want to work with you. It's not about doing a dirty, hard marketing sale saying, use me today, but it's about showcasing what you do and believing in what you do. Web applications, there's a new advancement in web applications. If anyone's sitting out there and saying, hey, I want to design a uh, mobile app because that's the future. Three months ago, iOS released a privacy update where now they're letting you download what's called progressive web apps actually to your device. So now what we can do and what we're doing with the AT project is there's a single button at the top of your page which we're at the home page of our essentially website as a mobile application. So the, the future, oh actually the real future, where I see that going is in 10 years time you're going to open your phone and no one's going to have a web app icon because every website is going to be created mobile first and it's only going to be a button away. So web applications are the future and a few people spoke about communication and I cannot start on the importance of communication and it's not only communication with your own team and the people around you and your family and your friends but communicate with your clients in a very in, a, in the way that you know how to do business. It's about being honest, it's about being open but make sure communication is a real key. And the one thing I've really forgot to do through this, I have some amazing videos that normally do play when I do a double tap, and we've kind of just missed those for now. But my final note, if you build it, you may still need Google AdWords. <laughs> yeah.